Uh, Brian Rezik, who's our manager of our software department, and you've heard from interjecting today quite a bit, is going to talk a little bit about uh, his area and colors and all the fancy stuff you can do with the Cedar screens. Uh, so, Brian, you can clip this on. And we can lose both of them. <laughs> Uh, so as Walt said, uh, Brian Rezik, software manager, uh, been with Cisco 18 plus years now. Uh, for those of you that have been with us before at this users group, yes, the ponytail is gone <laughs> for the first time in, gosh, eight, 19, 20 years, something like that. Uh, but wanted to go over a few things that we can do with Cedar uh, that operators find helpful, that you guys with reporting find helpful, some suggestions that we've had from other customers. So uh, one of the things that we can do is a lot of people like this green color as the background instead of the standard gray that we have on the screens. So we can do any custom colors that you want on the screens. Any of the 60, 16 million custom colors that are available in a computer we can put on the screens. So uh, people find this green helpful because then you can see, okay, green's good. Thing is, it doesn't override your highlighting for exceedances, you know, so you can still have your, your yellow here, uh, red for, you know, serious issues. You can't see it here, but this is actually a negative value on their level for limit, which I'll get to in a few minutes. But if you want something other than what we have by default on your screens, we can do that. Uh, they work on monitor codes, so valid data, but they also work off process codes. So if you're in startup, we have this kind of burnt orange didn't come across very well. So you can see that that's startup data that you're, you know, you don't necessarily have to comply with your normal operations limits. Really easy, handy for the operators to tell, okay, I'm in startup. I don't necessarily need to worry about these numbers um, and as compared to the, the green here that, you know, normal operations valid data. Uh, one thing that a lot of people, when I talk about this, I don't think I've mentioned in the past, the, num the colors extend to your giant numbers as well. So here you can have one unit, on your giant numbers this is in normal operations here, colors green, data is valid. This unit happens to be in startup, so it's got the orange background. So, real big, no, your big numbers that everybody seems to love, you can, those colors extend out to those uh, windows as well, not just the fixed screens on the, the data monitor. Um, so, basically, any color you want, we can put on the screen. Uh, feature we developed a few years ago that operators love is what we call level for limit. Uh, it's a predictive value. Uh, it gives you the value you should run at to meet the limit at the end of the hour. It's based on your current current and previous periods. So if it's a, an hour limit, it takes into account what you've operated the hour. If it's three hour rolling, it takes into account what you operated the previous two hours and the current hour and comes up with the target value that you stay at to meet the limit. Uh, it works for any of your short term hourly, you know, rolling hour up to the daily level. Doesn't really work too well for your 12 month rollings or things like that. Uh, and it can work on a block average, you know, so if you have a three hour block, which, you know, New Jersey sites have, or rolling averages, you know, so those are that. Uh, we put it on the screen typically after the current hour. It's right here on this screen. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually a negative number here. Can't quite read the text on this screenshot. Um, so because it's negative, there's nothing they can do. They've already exceeded their limit. Um, the higher that value is, the better off you are. It means you've been operating below your limit for the majority of the hour or the majority of the period, and you have a lot of wiggle room. If you're operating way below your limit, that number at the end of the hour can spike up three, four, 500, unrealistic. We realize this, this is the mathematical calculation. We know your unit's never going to operate at 300 ppm. <laughs> uh, but we can apply our custom highlights. So, you know, uh, in this case, their limit's 10 uh, in this specific, specific example. So here at 18.5 and 14, they're above, above their limits. So we've got those. And then, like I said, in this specific example, they're, they're negative. So they've already had an exceedance at that point. Uh, a lot of people find that helpful because it takes the guesswork out of where do I need to operate at? You know, if I run below this value, I'm going to be below the limit. Uh, 
One thing that we've had requests for for numerous years is the ability to run all my quarterly reports with one button click. We have that ability. We can put that together. Uh, so you get a button and it says run all my quarter one reports and it generates a predefined set of reports. Uh, it's great for quarterly reports, annual reports, semi-annual reports where you're running the same reports every time. You're submitting the same reports every time. There are a couple limitations to that. One, it saves as individual PDFs, not one big long PDF. Saving as one PDF is on our list of things to do. I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, two, uh, it's something that we have to configure for you at this point. Eventually, we'll get to the point where you can set up your own reports that you want printed. But for right now, we have to set it up uh, in the background, and then it gives you a button that says, OK, I want these specific reports. So if that's something you're interested in, shoot me an email, give me a call. We'll, we'll talk about that. And I know people usually always have questions for me, so that's basically all I've got for right now. And I know I'm late in the day, so we all back on track. Yeah, and we added that uh, that suggestion earlier about being able to email the got that on my list and we'll definitely look at that in the future. <laughs> no, I'm a I I I'm an IT guy at heart, so I know all about cybersecurity and those technical level details and I learned STEMs working at Cisco. I, I my college degree is in information technology, so I'm a I'm a computer programmer and IT guy at heart. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Any other things that you would like to see being able to be done? I know Dave asked some things earlier and we had a little bit of discussion with Kevin earlier. Anything else that's come to mind? Yes, Mike. <laughs> um, is it a pretty easy i'll start with the pretty easy uh if you know how to click a few buttons and can follow a set of written instructions yes it's pretty easy to update the version of cedar it is a new install we don't patch cedar we install new versions so you do have to stop data collection while you're installing a new version uh, me, as a pro at doing it, it's about five or ten minutes unless something goes wrong, knock on wood. Um, but if you're able to sit there and, you know, work a computer and follow, you know, a set of instructions, you can install a new version. Uh, is there charges for the new version? We are not currently charging for updates within the Cedar 7 uh, software. When it comes to Cedar 8, yes, there will probably be charges, but we're not there yet quite yet. Um, so anybody that has Cedar 5, 6, and 7, it's free to upgrade to the latest version of Cedar uh, to fix whatever bugs. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch the third part of the question. Oh, site by site basis. Yeah, yes. If, if a lot of people have gotten their IT departments involved uh, and their IT people say if it's working, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of stuff. Um, so if you want to upgrade to, to the, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I'm chuckling. <laughs> um, if you want to update to the latest version, that's completely your discretion. If you have something that you think is wrong, uh, you know, definitely reach out to us. We, we are constant, continually 
improving continually, revising, and, and as Kevin mentioned, you know, fixing little tweaks here and there. So uh, if you have something that you think is wrong or you don't like, you know, let us know. Sure. Let me know what you want. I'll... Yeah. Anything else? Soon. <laughs> Kevin's looking at me with dread. Uh, yes, so any day now. <laughs> so, yeah, any day now is in, you know, Ideally, before the end of October ish, it would Cedar 8 will be released. <laughs> so, yeah.